Benjamin Netanyahu with what appears to be a stunning come from behind victory, poised to win his fourth term as Israeli prime minister. Not the picture that many intended uh, to see this morning or thought they would see. Netanyahu's conservative Likud party winning big last night despite the polls showing a very tight contest and in fact behind uh, as we looked at this picture yesterday. His top opponent, Isaac Herzog, conceding what was a closely watched race, especially given all the back and forth that came here in the United States over this whole thing. John Huddy is live in Jerusalem with the very latest on this. So John, good morning to you. What is the reaction there in Israel today? Well, surprise in a word, Martha. You know, this was unexpected, as you were just talking about. Uh, as you said, according to the, fri- the uh, pre-election results that came out, poll results that came out Friday, it showed that Prime Minister Netanyahu was trailing well behind Isaac Herzog and his Zionist Union Party, which is essentially the Labor Party uh, here in Israel. Well, then last night, as the exit poll results started coming out, and through the morning, we saw uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Netanyahu surge ahead in terms terms of overall Knesset seats. Now he has 30 Knesset seats compared with Herzog's 24. And that's really considered a landslide victory. You know, I was at uh, the Likud party headquarters last night in Tel Aviv. And when the exit poll results started coming out about 10 o'clock local, I mean, the crowd went nuts. It became just a roar. The music was blasting. And then, of course, Netanyahu came out and spoke so thanking his supporters, thanking his family, thanking his friends, and saying they were going to continue with the progress, continues with, with the policies that they've already been following through on. Uh, but I, I tell you, it was so loud, Martha, I couldn't even hear myself speak. So very unexpected, big surprise today, Martha. Yeah, a big surprise indeed. So what happens next? Well, what will happen next is uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has to form a coalition government. What I mean by that is he needs to get the other parties, right-wing parties, to throw uh, the support behind him and thus getting the Knesset seats. The majority of Knesset seats, the magic number in the Knesset is 61 to get the majority of the 120 seats. And once the Prime Minister is able to do that, and he's expected to do that within the 28 allotted days, uh, at that point then he'll become Prime Minister, entering his fourth term and the longest term so far that somebody has served as Prime Minister in Israel. And just real quick, Martha, speaking of the Knesset, I just want to show you behind me, just kind of a show and tell. That's the Knesset building right there. Thank so you just for a little uh, out. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, <laughs> sure. John. Well, it's uh, very clear that the Israeli people have voted uh, for the settlements, for the occupation. Uh, they voted, as Prime Minister Netanyahu said, that if, he's re- if he is re-elected, he will not allow a Palestinian state to emerge and he will continue with settlement activities. Israel stopped implementing any of its obligations and they expect us to continue implementing our obligations. This cannot continue. Status quo cannot continue. Business as usual cannot continue. And the international community must realize today that the real danger to this region stems from the coalition that will be formed in Israel, a coalition of occupation, settlers and dictations. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is celebrating a big election victory. His main rival called to concede this morning. Mary Peterson is in Tel Aviv with what Netanyahu's win means for Israel and relations with the United States. Barry, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Well, Prime Minister Netanyahu is hard at work this morning, forming a parliamentary coalition. No party won a simple majority, but it's expected he won't have much trouble forming the alliances, keeping him in power. In American political parlance, you can call him the comeback kid. He trailed in the opinion polls, but won the only poll that matters, the vote. We face great diplomatic and security challenges, he warned his supporters. First the victory, then the victory kiss with his wife Sarah. You have given me much strength, he said. It was an election that saw an enormous turnout of almost 72%. Even a bride took time to vote. The morning after was good for some, like Eli and Yahoo, who runs a stall at Tel Aviv's Carmel Market. 
He will take care of security, he told us. He will only go to war when we really need to. This is a tough break for President Obama. Netanyahu wants to torpedo the American-led effort in an Iranian nuclear weapons deal, and he now says he opposes a separate Palestinian state, a major stumbling block in any Mideast effort at peace. Gail? Barry, thank you. Secretary of State John Kerry has called the uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to congratulate him on his victory after an extremely tight election race that turned out to be not so tight after all. That's the word from the White House today, which says President Obama will call Netanyahu in the coming days. The Prime Minister fended off a strong challenge from Israel's opposition leader by going way right. With nearly all votes counted, Netanyahu's conservative Likud party earned roughly 30 of Parliament's 120 seats. Just before the election, Netanyahu ruled out creating a Palestinian state, saying if they, if they vote for his party again, there will be no two-state solution, not as long as he's around. No way. President Obama has supported a two-state solution, as did President Bush, on a path to peace in the Middle East. So now what? Connor Powell has it from our Jerusalem newsroom. What do these election results mean for the dynamic between the United States and Israel and, and Iran, for that matter? Mr. Shepard, as you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu has been the, the chief critic of the U.S. and international attempts to negotiate a deal with Iran. And now with this really decisive victory, well, those criticisms, they're not going anywhere. Netanyahu made stopping Iran's nuclear program the centerpiece of his election. And in fact, it's very likely he's going to ramp up the criticisms and, uh, of these Iran talks. And having uh, won this really uh, resounding victory uh, yesterday, Netanyahu appears to have a mandate from Israelis to continue to try to pressure the Obama administration to give up these talks with Iran. Now, it's not clear, Shepard, whether or not Netanyahu can single-handedly stop these talks, but everything we're hearing and seeing out of Netanyahu is he's going to continue to try. So, so the peace process is effectively dead? Yeah, in terms of the peace process here, I mean, the, the peace process was really going nowhere. But with this statement by Netanyahu that he's abandoning any real effort to talk or to even accept a two-state solution, uh, the peace process here is basically over. Now, the White House said today it was deeply concerned about the, quote, divisive language coming out of Net Netanyahu's Likud party. Uh, the prime minister appeared to sort of marginalize Israel's minority Arab community when he warned supporters on Facebook that uh, the high Arab voter turnout endangered his conservative party's chances to stay in power. That combined with the statement that he's giving up on a two-state solution uh, it has the White House reevaluating the overall sort of peace process here. Needless to say, Shepard, between the Iran talks and this new policy decision by Netanyahu, the already tense relationship between the United States, the White House, and Prime Minister Netanyahu, well, those are probably only going to get more tense and deteriorate even further. President Obama's relationship with Prime Minister Netanyahu has fluctuated from chilly to downright frigid. Chief White House correspondent Ed Henry looks at what a new term for Netanyahu means for the U.S. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Brad. It's no secret that at best the president wanted the prime minister out. At worst, he wanted to see him weaker so he can't stop a nuclear deal with Iran. And that's why, at least initially today, White House aides and top Democrats couldn't even wish the prime minister well. Well, the people of Israel have spoken. I respect the results uh, that they have produced. Remember that just two weeks ago when the Israeli Prime Minister addressed Congress, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi said she was so angry she was fighting back tears, which is why today one of President Obama's top aides joined Pelosi in refusing to even congratulate Benjamin Netanyahu by name. We want to congratulate the Israeli people for the democratic process for the election uh, that they just engaged in with all the parties that engage in that election. The administration eventually got around to congratulating Netanyahu, though it was Secretary of State John Kerry, not the president, on the line, because a coalition government still needs to be formed. Okay. Secretary Kerry called the prime minister this morning to congratulate him. Uh, given there is an ongoing government formation process, they did not discuss substantive issues. I'm not going to characterize the tone of the call. Yet Netanyahu clearly has a mandate to form that new government. So a series of U.S. allies all offered personal congratulations to him, including Indian Prime Minister Narendra
Narendra Modi, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper, and British Prime Minister David Cameron, with Cameron declaring in a tweet, quote, Congratulations to Netanyahu on election result. As one of Israel's firmest friends, UK looks forward to working with new government. While White House spokesman Josh Earnest said the president will phone Netanyahu in the days ahead, he suggested the call may get contentious. Earnest charging Netanyahu's rhetoric in the final days of the campaign marginalized Arabs, and the prime minister's decision to turn against Palestinian statehood will force the U.S. to rethink its approach in peace talks. Meanwhile, Netanyahu's vindication led a string of Republican presidential contenders to say this emboldens him to try and block the president's team from sealing a nuclear deal with Iran ahead of next week's deadline. This is the country that has sponsored Hamas, Hezbollah, terrorism around the world, killed Americans, taken Americans hostage. You don't do business with people like that. While even some of the president's close advisors admit the tension may only grow. I think uh, this is a relationship between the president and the prime minister um, that you could actually see getting worse in the next few weeks if, uh, if an Iran deal comes through uh, before it ever has a chance to get better. Now, former Obama campaign operative Jeremy Byrd had been working on efforts to oust Netanyahu, and a Senate panel has been probing whether a Washington-based nonprofit that recently got money from the State Department was also working on that effort. A spokesman for the group, One Voice, has denied any wrongdoing, Brett. Okay, Ed, thank you.